All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I am with Kent Salberg, Sustainable Farmers Association, our Minnesota-owned version of Gabe Brown, Ray Archlett, all rolled into one. There's two people in the state of Minnesota that I would go to for cover crop grazing. Everything I do, I, I, I found him seven years too late, but I can glad to finally have met you years ago but good to be here John um, so tell us a little about yourself your background and your organization yeah uh, Kent Solberg livestock and grazing specialist sustainable farming association my wife Linda and I have a hundred percent grass-based dairy operation in Wadena County uh, Minnesota I've been with SFA nine years uh, sustainable farming association is a 28 year old farmer to farmer network we work on farmer education basically and a big part of our work these days is on soil health. Uh, my niche is to work on principle five in soil health, integrating livestock in the cropping <laughs> system. So um, I had to think for a second, what's number five again? Yeah, <laughs> so we, we work through the whole system to get there, but uh, integrating livestock on complex covers like we see at the demo plots here at Farm Fest, it's a really great way to accelerate soil health. So what have you, with the goofy year of 19, yeah. um, has it brought more people to you? Yeah, or? yeah, it has. I mean, people, you know, are getting into prevent plant. And what, do, what do we do with these drowned out acres? And, and uh, just wondering what on earth to do. Uh, even people here at Farm Fest, you know, saying, we, we did this prevent plant planting, but we don't know what we're supposed to be looking for. Can you show us, yeah. you know, what we should see out there? And so just a lot of questions and you know it's it's one of those opportunities it's really difficult it's just been a really tough year for a lot of people because it's so wet but we're trying to turn lemons into lemonade yes. so to speak here yeah and and using prevent plant acres um, to get people familiar with cover crops to get them familiar with what they do um, encouraging them to leave a test strip you know on whatever they do so they've yes. got a comparison next year uh, and, and it just give it a try. I mean, a lot of, I talked to one uh, producer yesterday, he was discouraged. He planted the first planting, got drowned it out, and now he's waiting for it to dry out, and he got stuck the other day trying to replant again yes. in some of those drowned out areas, and and uh, he's, he's trying to figure out what to do, and I said, man, don't get discouraged. Hang in there. There's still time. There's hope. There's, There's still hope. hope. Keep we can, going. Forward. We can make it so. great again for 2020. That's right. That's right. Um, the cattle side. So your niche is, or not niche, your specialty is the cattle side. So over by us, it's a lot more cattle country than yep. God. Well, I everybody always refers to my territory as God's country of the state. You know what? <laughs> it's a hard badge to wear. <laughs> but by us... Compared to grazing this, perennials, yep. You know, this is a typical pasture in yep. my area, and we're hauling feed. So, do you guys have, out of 28 years, you guys must have some research, some data, so as yep. a cattle grower, we can come to you and say, okay, look, this stuff was seeded this spring. Look at the tonnage yeah. that you would have Amazing to move tonnage. through here. You know, sorghum mixes. So, you guys have enough data to help a guy out. And show him some cash flow stuff yep. to utilize that acreage better. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Especially with these prevent plant acres, and that they've loosened up the rules that you can go in and hay or graze that ground after September first. Oh yeah. This year, I mean, just an absolute huge opportunity. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of uh, people I work with who have both cattle and crops who have said, you know, kind of like one of those, why haven't we been doing this for 40 <laughs> years? You know, once they start, they just love it. Yes. Um, we've got. We've got operations in central Minnesota and northern Minnesota grazing into December, January, February now okay. on these cover crop mixes. Yeah. I've got a gentleman in Todd County I've been working with the last few years. Two out of the last three years, he's only fed hay 60 days <laughs> out of the winter. And he's using a combination of covers, yeah. different types of mixes of covers for different times of the year. Yes. Uh, and then he's using perennial pasture and managed grazing. And he's able to stretch that out. And we often, John, want to just think of things in the feed cost savings. Right. But it's manure handling also. Oh, yeah. And that's a cost we don't think about. We can yep. use those animals. We're, we're actually killing two birds with one stone yeah. when we do some of this stuff. I mean, just think how much manure, less manure you'd haul if you kept your animals out another 60 or 90 days. Yep. You yep. know, grazing in the season. I know there's places in central Minnesota right now 
that are getting a little dry. The pastures are drying up. It's been hot. They're short on feed. Okay. You know, this could be a great opportunity. To, I mean, that's been in 44 days. The yeah. taller stuff <laughs> over there. Look at that. That's, I mean, that stuff's almost six feet that's, tall. Yep, that's up to my there's, chest. There's a lot of tonnage out there. Yes. You know, and yep. what a great opportunity to put animals in something like that now. But yeah. even to come into something like these cool season mixes, you know, that can still go in now. We can get 45, 50, maybe even 60 days of growth, depending on where you are in the state here. Okay. And, and getting enough growth on that, that you could get some grazing in in October or November yeah. uh, before you have to feed. And then you got that ground ready to go next year for corn or something like yep. that. So. And then with the manure storage, we're in the state of Minnesota. And uh, with manure storage now, if we want to keep them animals on lot, we now have to make sure our runoff from our manure storage you know what I mean? You got all yep. that management coming into it. Management and class and yeah. Your cows. You yep. said you milk grass fed. Yep. yep. Uh, James the Irishman, you okay. <laughs> James the Irishman, he's gonna love you now. Uh, he always teases me, he has never experienced frost kill on his farm because he's in Ireland. Oh <laughs> yes. Yes, James. So in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, he, he lives in that's God's country if you want to feed cows grass. That perennial ryegrass, boy, that's 12 he showed, months a year grazing. He showed soil that would make the Red River Valley guys blush. Yeah. Um, yes. So, in Minnesota, I, I, I did not know that you were doing dairy. He has been hounding me to find somebody. How on earth are you making grazing dairy grass in Minnesota work? So it's tricky. It's tricky, you know, but it helps if we set up a combination of really high quality, very diverse perennial pastures with a blend of covers that we can graze in succession or what some people call a forage chain. Okay. So we're going to keep those animals out grazing as long as we possibly can depending on the resource base of the farm. Okay. <laughs> but then we then we go into something like haylage or baleage. That's okay. as close as we can get to fresh on the stem. Yeah. And we, we have to put yep. up feed yep. in the winter time. Yeah, that, we just, just have to. We're going to have at least at least 60 days that we're going to have to feed stored feed, bare minimum. But we're doing some of these complex cover mixes that we're getting RFQs of in the 170s, 180s. Really? Yeah, in, in November and December. Wow. In November and December. Wow. And so we design these cover crop mixes with that specifically in mind. We design the mix. For when we want to use it. Do we want to use it in August? We're going to design a mix, you know, like that. To yeah. Use in August. Do we want to use it in November and December and into January? We're going to design a mix to work for us then. Do we want something we can graze in the spring before perennial pastures? Then we're going to turn to something like cereal rye that, that greens up early most years. So it's using a combination of these things all yeah. together. And then we've got to fill in those gaps with high quality feed. And we're finding that most people who are doing either 100% grass-based or very heavy grass-based with little supplement, very diverse pastures, very diverse hay mixes, put up at optimal forage conditions as baleage or haylage. Okay. And, and you can do a pretty good job of maintaining production and it's pretty low cost I mean we're keeping those animals out as much as possible it keeps your manure handling down you know uh, you know University of Minnesota has been outwintering uh, dairy cattle for 20 years and really? their documentation yeah out at Morris at okay. the West Central Re Outreach West, West Central Research and Outreach Center in Morris <laughs> Minnesota get that all right Brad sorry about that uh, um, but I'd encourage people, you know, they've got an open door policy out there. People can go check it out in the winter. I've brought producers there looking, you know, maybe their barn burned or got blasted apart by a tornado. What do we do? And we've gone out to look at that because there's some low cost ways that we can house cattle, even in northern climates like Minnesota, and maintain production with cows fed similarly in like uh, the research Brad Hines did out there was on uh, compost bedded barns. And so um, they found no difference in milk production. They actually found the animals in some ways performed a little better living outside all winter than in a barn. And their biggest headaches were fighting with the compost pack in the barn. So, you know, it's a way to simplify your life no, you're not going to get 29,000 pound rolling herd average. Right. I know you're not. But we've got grazing dairies. I saw some data for one in Wisconsin not terribly long ago 
milking you know a modest number of cows and they're a grazing dairy and they netted 128,000 in 2018. Yeah, and, that, and, and, that brags better at the cafe than a 29,000 yeah, herd average. Yeah, we need to be talking about net or how much we're yes. making per hundred weight or how much we're making per bushel or how much per acre. Not necessarily that we had 300 bushel corn or we got yes. 29,000 pound to 30,000 pound cows. Yes. You know, it's it's really like, like you've said, you know, it's about how much we keep, how much how much we bring home to the farm uh, to support the family and a livelihood. Yeah. And, and we find that when we treat it in that manner, the livelihood actually improves yes. for most producers. Yes, and then it takes the stress off. And maybe in a couple years we'll have contests in the magazines of largest profit yeah. per acre oh, instead of the corn great. growers. Absolutely. Not to pick on our friends at the corn growers, but maybe we'll have a corn, well the corn growers can have a profit per acre contest instead of a yield, yield contest. Yield per acre, yes. Because yield isn't getting us anywhere. Doesn't always work. When you it know? costs you 201 bushel work. an acre, yep. it, it's kind of hard. But I, 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 I have nothing to follow up with that, Ken. <laughs> that, is, that is why you're our Gabe Brown. That is fantastic. <laughs> wealth of knowledge I, I appreciate you so much for everything you're you've welcome done. well we all keep learning together <laughs> i learn stuff from you i learn well, stuff yeah. from almost every producer i talk to it just adds to the knowledge pool as we move forward with this soil health stuff yeah and we're going to continue to learn for many many years to come we're just scratching yeah. the surface and there's so many options and opportunities with covers to extend grazing season, to put performance on it, you know, get performance on animals. Yeah. Um, just huge opportunities out there we're just tapping into. Building soil health, and once we do that, the ability to start throttling back on our input costs. I had a great conversation right over there yesterday with a producer who was telling me how great his soil is, and I said, well, are you cutting back on any of your fertilizer inputs yet? He looked at me like, huh? And I said, <laughs> you know, I challenged him. I said, you know, he's he's seeing good aggregation. He's seeing good infiltration. Yeah. He's seeing earthworm populations there. Yeah. Even his neighbors comment about how spongy his ground is. Okay. You know, when they walk on it, it's like he's now in that position where he can start seeing a real return on his, his investment. Yes by starting to throttle back on some of his fertilizer inputs. Let the life in the soil create Do that Do some fertility. of that work for you. And yeah. I encouraged him, I said, you know, we talked about just plant establishment. Some of David Johnson's work at New Mexico State University. Okay. That seedling establishment actually performs better in healthy soils than it does with a starter fertilizer. Okay. And I said, boy, if, you're, if your soil is as good as what you're telling me here, I'd encourage you just to take one strip next year and not put any starter on. You know, and see what happens. I'm glad you said that because this year I did not use pop up. Okay. And uh, on on manure spread fields, yep, it's that slow to get going. So I did use 20 gallons of 28 okay. percent early. Plus we had torrential waters yeah, all spring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 20 gallons is the only thing I apply yeah. with a little amphio on it because we need sulfur, you know. Yep, yep. Um, no pop-up. And for that first couple months, I'm like, oh, crap. But now, you know, for the last three weeks, that manure's kicking in. Yeah. Things are coming alive. That that corn is taking off. Good, good, and, good. And uh, I was scared of the no pop-up. Like, uh -huh. we have to have pop-up. Yeah, yep. And... I, I, I am so glad you said that because I, I'm hoping to get away from it just because of one, it's $30 an acre or $20 yeah, an acre. Yeah. Uh, two, it's another tending to the planter. It's another yep. stress. Yep. How do I get it out to the planter? I got to refill yep. and blah, 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 blah. And in this day and age, we, we want to eliminate stress. Yep. We want to get back to the farm. And, and this is just snowballed for me. Yeah. My first five years was like that, except not that black. My first five years resulted into that. The last couple of years have been doing this, and now it's just taken off, and now it's getting fun. Then, because in the last couple of years is when I just met all you folks and all these other farmers that are doing this, and now it's just like a whole new world. It is, it is truly fun. And, it is, uh, it is fun, and it's fun to watch farmers get excited. There's, there's a lot of stress and, and despair in, in ag because of low commodity prices 
But if we can start addressing production costs using yeah. some of these principles yep. and just figuring out what's going to work on that farm and on that field, and it takes a little experimentation, but leave yeah. a strip here, leave a strip yep. there, try some things, Starts with one change strip. some things, network, talk to folks, watch your YouTube channel, <laughs> come to workshops, come to Farm Fest. We got the Soil Health We've, Coalition and Sustainable Farming Association here to talk about soil health. Yep. University um, of Minnesota is over University here. University of Minnesota, there's good resources there. Uh, and, and now with Prevent Plant Acres and Drown Out that we're dealing with this, this year, let's turn lemons into lemonade. Yeah. Let's use this as an opportunity to experiment with some of these things, but then pay attention to what happens next year. Go out with a shovel. Go out and see if you find some worms. Go out and see if that water infiltrates better. One of the first things we hear, John, when producers start doing this is that drowned out spots are getting smaller. Yes. And it doesn't yes. take long. Or, I've got or yield we're, maps to confirm yeah, the change. Or, or we're not rutting the field at soybean harvest or <laughs> yes. whatever. You know, yes. and I've seen side by side pictures. One year it covers uh, one neighbor and the other side of the fence. They didn't, and man, you can see the ruts, they're that deep and there's not a rut on his side of the field and they harvested within days of each other. Yes. We did have like, a neighbor that did uh, he did no till beans one year just because he it was a tough spring. Yeah. So his regular program didn't work. He no till the beans. That fall was wet fall, you know, like the last three falls were rice tires, mudding it in. I got onto that field. I forgot to turn on the four-wheel drive. Combine that field. We parked the wagons in that field. That was the only field we didn't have to shuttle to the headland or to the road because we actually got the wagons into the field. And, and the next year he had to tear it all up because he just wasn't quite sure if that one bushel difference. The one bushel difference. It's like, holy crap, you had 10 bushel in financial difference. And, but yeah, we could go on forever. We, we do could. have to be careful of the enthusiasm. Yes. I was super excited to be talking to a farmer and uh, they, they just broke down. And I, I, you feel like crap because here I am just bubbling with enthusiasm, love of the farming. Things are great. 2019 sucks, but it still is awesome. And, and these farmers are just like, we are We're going to shoot you. We're just going to punch you in the mouth if you don't stop right now. And so sometimes you got to be a little careful with the yeah. enthusiasm. But yeah. no, it, it is fantastic. So we've done our half hour Minnesota goodbye. We so have. We will, Great job. <laughs> we will Good to see you at Farm Fest. Ken's wife. Thank you. Uh, Linda. Linda. Linda, thank you very much for doing the camera work.